All right, kids, today I'm gonna to show you how to solve for the period of orbit for an object which is in a binary star system. You see, typically when we have an orbit, we might have a central object with something orbiting around it. But in a binary system, what we have are two different masses which are orbiting around their mutual center of gravity. Now, what we're looking at today is a simplified case of, of binary star systems in that we're gonna say that the two masses are equal to one another and we're also going to say that these two masses are in perfectly circular orbits. And I know that's not particularly realistic for those of you who are getting into astrodynamics, but this is a real typical example that you'll see when you first start talking about centripetal forces and Newton's law of universal gravitation. You see, the only force acting on either of these masses is the force of gravity between them. And just like with any other orbit, it's this force of gravity that's causing these masses to orbit a central point. Now, the force by gravity is given by Newton's law of universal gravitation, where G is the gravitational constant, M1 and M2 are the two masses, and D is the distance between the two masses. Now, in this problem, just like any other orbit, the force by gravity is going to be acting as the centripetal force. And we know centripetal force is given by mv squared over r, where v is the velocity of the object and r is the radius of orbit. Now looking at this object right here, it's that force of gravity that is acting as the centripetal force. So setting these two equations equal to each other, we get this. Now realize, because our two masses are the same as m1 and m2 are just m, so ultimately we're going to get a partial cancellation here on our mass. But the trick in the problem has to do with this little radius r right here. You see, in a circular orbit, the distance between the two objects, d, is the same as the radius of orbit. The issue is in this problem, the distance between the two objects is not the same as the radius of orbit. Then the radius of orbit is going to be half of the distance between the two objects. Or you could say our dimension d is equal to 2r. Now, subbing this term in right here, we get the velocity of these objects as they orbit one another. But remember, we're trying to solve for the period or the time for one orbit. So we need to relate the velocity back to time. Now, ultimately, these objects are gonna move in a circle that has some radius r. So the circumference of that circle is gonna be two pi r. And realize this is nothing other than the distance traveled in a single orbit. So if we treat velocity as though it is equal to distance over time, we now have an expression relating the period to velocity. So substituting that equation into our original equation for velocity, and then rearranging for period, we get this expression relating the period to the radius of orbit as well as the gravitational constant and either of the masses. Now in the future, we'll take a look at what happens when we do things like change these masses so they aren't the same. But this has been how to solve for the period of a binary star system made up of two identical masses in circular orbit. So I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.